طيب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وأرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه وأدخلنا برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين آمين يا رب العالمين uh, Welcome everybody to uh, I guess this is part 5 of our uh, Fiqh of Tahara series and uh, uh, Alhamdulillah um, uh, for those of you who were here last week um, uh, Sheikh Arif was here and he did a, a great lecture Alhamdulillah I was watching it uh, uh, on on the different angle of Tahara who was here by the way last week anybody was here last week yeah so mashallah um, uh, if, if you remember he, he talked about actually and, and uh, uh, I wish actually we did that as the first session because understanding uh, um, the spiritual side of Tahara because we said Tahara means what Tahara technically means to remove something to purify something, right? Uh, and he mentioned that uh, uh, this is from Sheikh uh, Al uh, Ghazali's Rahimahullah uh, Ihya Ulum al Deen and other, uh, 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 the other books that were basically summarized, Minhaj al Qasidin, etc., that they looked at the spiritual side of ibadat. And he talked about why, etc. But he mentioned there's like four levels of tahara. Who remembers them? Taban, he said, I'll, I'll start it off. And just f for review and benefit. He mentioned the first one was uh, the physical one that we're studying. This is the apparent uh, um, one that it's wajib for all of us to understand. But then he mentioned three more. Yalla, who remembers them? Naam? So he mentioned the heart, purification of the heart. He also mentioned the purification from min ad dunub so purification from the sins that you're doing everybody is committing sins maybe on the way here you actually looked at something or you said something or you thought of something or whatever Some, fa, fa, and where do we get this and he mentioned the hadith where the Prophet mentioned actually that when you do the physical one okay you know your your the water that drips is like your sins they're dripping off and and then he mentioned uh, uh, another level which is like the highest level he says basically purif purifying yourself uh, يعني, from everything except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يعني, living your life with ihsan يعني, living as if you can see Allah and if he can't see you uh, you can't see him he can see you يعني, everything you do is through Allah and he mentioned this is not misunderstood as leaving the dunya no but actually uh, everything is, is secondary to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right and so when you have you have a choice between Allah and whatever you have money, house, dunya, children Allah comes first that's a high level of purification and you cannot reach that level unless you go through the ones before. Yeah, nobody can say, I'm going to go to Ihsan, skipping, you know, and doesn't hold Tahara. And that's why the deen uh, uh, is at different levels. The, 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 the beginner will benefit, the intermediate will benefit, and the, someone who's advanced will benefit at a different level. SubhanAllah. Okay. Uh, that's awesome. So uh, yani, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward uh, Sheikh Arif. Uh, so today, inshallah, uh, last week we stopped, or two weeks before, we finished, uh, uh, we started al wudu and we talked about wiping, right, over the, the, the uh, what are the three things we talked about, wiping? Wiping over the, the three things, the socks and the amama and the khimar for the woman, right? Jameel. Uh, today, inshallah, we want to talk about nawaqd al wudu what makes you lose your wudu, the invalidators of wudu, okay? Uh, uh, forbidden acts uh, in the state of impurity. Uh, uh, inshallah, we're talking about that. Uh, al ghusl. We're going to talk about the ghusl. I'm hoping we can cover all this. Um, uh, and when it's uh, uh, when is it wajib to do ghusl? Okay. Uh, and recommended times to do ghusl, and then other things that are related to ghusl. Inshallah. And then we have one more session. It's not going to be next week because next week we have inshallah we have a barbecue. Um, uh, but the week after that, inshallah. Uh, we will uh, actually today we might even cover a tayammum. We might even cover a tayammum. But the last week, inshallah, we'll, we'll talk about removing najasat, okay, removing impurities. And then we'll also do menstruation and al nifas, al hayd wa nifas, uh, even though it's more related to women. But I think this is important information. Uh, uh, and, and the sisters will benefit more, inshallah. Um, طيب, let's start. We always start with review because we want to make sure that we remember uh, some of this material. And if we didn't remember and review, okay, and at least yani, uh, uh, we can kind of do it together. Uh, we talked about two weeks ago, al-farq bayn al-shart wal-rukun, right? We talked about al-shart, okay? 
And we talk about al-rukun and al-fard. We said fard and rukun are kind of similar. Fard and rukun, okay, are kind of similar. What is? What did we say the main difference between a shart, a condition, and a rukun? What did we say the main difference? We we said a main uh, a main similarity between both of them, and one main difference. Tadal. Eh, sah. So it's not throughout the whole thing. Sah. It's before, right? Jamil. But al al rukun is it it stays throughout the whole. Jamil. Jamil. Ahsent. So we mentioned like, for a rukun would be like al fatiha, right? Uh, uh, it has to it has to uh, uh, you do it once. It's in the act. Okay. Uh, but a shart would be something like facing the qibla. You have to face the qibla and you do it once, so khalas, it's nice. Um, طيب, um, uh, Jamil, and we said that the, the similarity between them is what? Is that if you don't do it, huh? this is the important part, if you miss a rukun, right, or a, a shart, then your act of worship is what? What's the hukum? What's the ruling on the act of worship? Khalas, it's, it's gone. You have to redo it. Tamam? If you if you don't have your your shart or your rukun, then the act of worship, okay, is gone. Hatta even if it's out of out of nisyan or or out of forgetfulness or out of jahl, out of ignorance. Tamam. But that's that's so this is from the highest level. Okay. Then we went to the to the what to the wajib. Tadr. We said because fi uh, binatum. Both of them, if you leave them, okay then you have to redo the act of worship, okay? But what's important uh, uh, to, to, uh, to differentiate is that one of them happens before the act, that's a shart, okay? And something has to be there the whole time, rukun. For rukun has to be there, okay? The whole time in the salah, okay? So that's how some of the ulama differentiate between both of them. يعني في فرق بيناتهم بس كمان في Both of them, if you leave them out, then your ibadah doesn't count. Even if you do it out of ignorance or forgetfulness. This is an important, and you will use this throughout all the fiqh. So now inshallah, once we go to all the, all the chapters of fiqh in the next year, uh, these, I'm gonna, these are going to come over and over. That's why I'm, I'm kind of throwing them in. طبعاً, this ilm, this is usul al-fiqh. You would study it by itself. تمام? الأحكام الوضعية and all those things. طيب, we said, what's the difference between rukun and wajib? So we just covered rukun. But then there's something that's wajib. Wajib, we said, is a higher level or lesser level? Lesser, right? Tab al wajib, we have to do it. It's wajib. Tab, what if I forget it? Uh, so, so if I don't do it out of forgetfulness or jahil, okay, it's not going to make the, the, the act of worship go away. Tamam? Uh, uh, and that's why, مثلا, in salah, if you forget a wajib, you can do sahu. Your ibadah is still good. But if you forget Fatiha, you can't do Sahu. Yani you will do the Sahu after, but you still have to redo the Raka. Tamam? Uh, um, we talked about the Arkan of Wudu. Arkan al Wudu. Right? The pillars of Wudu. Now that we talked the definition of, of, of Arkan, we talked about Arkan al Wudu. The things that have to be there in Wudu to be valid. What are they? We mentioned, I'll, I'll, I'll make it easy, we, made, we mentioned six. Yal, Bismillah. We'll do it together. Naam? So, so the order, okay, that w- I think that was number five, and? Naam? Okay, uh, no, that was, that was not a pillar, that was a? An niyyatu? Huh? No, it's not a sunnah. No, we said an niyya, huh? Do you remember we said an niyya uh, was a wajib, and if you forgot it, okay, your wudu is still valid. Okay? Tayyip. Uh, so, afun, afun, afun. That's the, 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 the basmala, afun, afun. Al, uh, uh, but uh, and we said aniya is a shart. Aniya is a shart for your wudu. It's a condition for your for your wudu. It's not one of the arkan because you do it before. خلاص تمام. But from the arkan we said um, uh, the order صحيح. And we said that yeah. So you cannot like break for an hour and then come back and finish the other half. You can't do your hand and face. But then you go, mashallah, do some push-ups and then come back. And we said, how do you know the period? We said uh, if it dries, يعني, if, if one part dries before the other one. So that's two. And then washing the four main, main parts, which are mentioned in the ayah, right? Wujuhakum, faces. Wa'aydiyakum, okay? Wamsahu bi ru'usikum, your heads. And then your feet. Tamam? So those are the four parts that are mentioned in the ayah. And the 
order and to make sure that it's done together. And, so alhamdulillah, those are the, the arkan of wudu. Uh, uh, what is the ruling on saying the basmala? We just kind of covered it right now, right? We said if you forget it, not mushkila. Tamam. Uh, okay. And then the last one. Uh, what is the ruling of niyyah? What's the hukum? And niyyah. Do you have to have it? You have to have it. So we said we have to have it in all the acts of, of purification. We said except uh, um, removing najasa. And if you have a najasa on your cloth, you don't need a niyyah. It's not, uh, 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 yani the things that you leave or you take off, you don't need a niyyah for. Okay? You don't need a niyyah for, uh, for that. Okay, Jameel. So let's start with the, with the nawaqad al-wudu. So when, you, uh, 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 when we say nawaqad, it's what invalidates your wudu. How you lose your wudu. Tamam? And a lot of things we know because we, alhamdulillah, we do it every day and we do it a couple times a day and we have them in mind. But it's always good to, to review them. The Hanabila, they, have, they put them into eight. They put them into eight. There's the common ones that we all know. So, so number one, they say anything that comes out of the two private parts. Okay? Mutlaqan. Uh, categor uh, categorically. Mutlaqan, when you hear this word in, in fiqh, it means whether it's sm uh, a large amount or small amount, pure or impure. Yani, uh, uh, anything that comes out of the two private parts, tamam, that will invalidate uh, uh, someone's uh, wudu. And I think that's very common. Everybody knows that one. Tamam. Uh, number two, we have what comes out of the rest of the body. Tayyip. So now this one, it has a bit of tafsil, some technicalities. What do you mean by uh, what comes out of the rest of the body? Before you read what's in front of you. What are we talking about? Comes out of the rest of the body. So like from the mouth, it give in like a, 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 a cut, you know, uh, some surgical procedure, whatever it is, tamam, from your eye. What if like some liquid comes out of your ear, tamam? So, okay, so what they say is whatever comes out of the rest of your body. So if it's urine, okay, or feces, right, uh, uh, that comes out of the lower part of the body, uh, large amount or s small amount, yeah, and the solids, yeah, the um, uh, large amount or small amount, uh, then then uh, uh, then this is this makes also lose your wudu. Okay, so um, for example, yeah, and he, someone does an operation and they have to remove something or something comes out or whatever, uh, um, you know th that would uh, that would remove your that would make you lose your wudu. Okay, then we have large amounts of other types of najasa. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, urine and feces, right? Those are the two main najasat that come out of the private parts. Uh, um, and, and it could come out of other body parts. But there's other types of najasat that come out, right? Like what? What other types of, of, of impurities that can come out of your body? Hmm? Like pus, like, like blood, like vomit, like these things, right? Um, uh, Jamil and, and for the woman like the the the, hayd, the, the blood of the uh, hayd. Um, so large amounts of these will, will make you lose your wudu. Okay? So large, like fahish they say, something fahish, like it's just a large amount of blood methyl and comes out, then makes you lose your wudu. If you have a little cut, you're fine. Yeah, and you should be fine. There's nothing, okay? So a little, yeah, sometimes, you know, like a little bit of vomit comes out, you eat too much or you're like, you're gassy or something. Does that make you lose your wudu? No. It's not fahish, it's a small amount, then uh, uh, you, should be, you should be fine. Okay? We have said we have here Athar of Sahabi bleeding during Salah, right? Um, uh, so that's fine. Um, uh, other things, then we have uh, some, some specific cases of people who have a con medical condition, مثلا. This is uh, uh, they mentioned in the books of fiqh, like uh, Salas al Bowl and uh, Salas al Rih and stuff like that. These are things that people have a medical condition that, uh, you know, مثلا, uh, Sometimes they have, they have air coming out all the time. This is a medical condition. Or some urine comes out all the time, just a little bit. So for them, they're excused. For them, they're excused. Someone who has this condition, you need to go to a doctor and make sure that you have this condition. So those people are excused, right? And it's recommended for them to renew their wudu after every salah. Okay? But uh, whatever we can do in a state of tahara, like reading Quran, for them, they don't have to you know, keep, keep people doing it. Uh, for them, inshallah, it, it should be fine if the small amounts are coming out. Question. Uh, mucus, najasa or no? Huh? Mucus, like, uh, um, no? It's, uh, throw. it's not, right? Mucus is not uh, najas. Um, and obviously your saliva. Otherwise, yeah, you have najasa. Just, just uh, making sure. Type. So, <clears throat> number three. So we're done number one. Whatever comes out of the private parts and whatever comes out of the rest of the body, we said, it has to be urine or feces or a large amount of najasa. So, so far, so good? Yeah, go ahead. 
we said a large amount is something that uh, يعني, based on our standards. Okay, so for um, if Yeah, is that a large amount? No. And no. nobody could see it. If you, if you had it right now, I wouldn't be able to see it. Right? But for if you have a, uh, I don't know if you ever see like <laughs> those videos or medical procedures, sometimes some will have like a big thing and it's like they cut it and it's like, <laughs> like it's like crazy amount. Right? So that would be a fahish, yeah, something that is. Uh, yeah, so nosebleed, if it's, it's running a lot, if it's just a little bit, of, uh, yeah. If it's running a lot, that, that's fahish, then it would, it would make you lose your, your okay? So uh, anything that comes out of the private parts, anything that, that comes out of the, the, the body that is urine or feces, or it's a large amount of a najasa, those are, uh, those remove your wudu. Naam? It could. <laughs> some of the uh, I just want to explain something about uh, um, uh, uh, some of the uh, the opinions or the ahkam that you see here. They're not. They don't all go back to a narration. So I'll give you an example later. We have like, مثلاً, recommended times to do ghusl. You're gonna see like 14. There's no. You won't find half of them in the hadith. But they'll do qiyas in algae. Because remember, we said before that uh, the four ways they get uh, rulings, the, the scholars, Quran, Sunnah, Ijma', everybody agrees on it. Okay, all the scholars agree on it. Or al qiyas, analogy. For example, you know, they'll say, the Prophet used to always recommend doing qusul when people gathered. Okay, so khalas, now uh, uh, in Muzdalifa, in when we go to the Haram, when we go anybody, any place that uh, people gather, we're gonna say that this is something that is recommended to do. So you do qiyas. Uh, um, it could be that they they, were, they did qiyas on that one, okay? Or uh, uh, yeah, qiyas on that one, something that's coming that's impure. You're saying, you're saying uh, you don't you don't you don't you never heard of proof that it invalidates you or that it's impure, that actual vomit is impure. Is is vomit impure? Hmm? What do you guys think? Is, is, is vomit something najis? Uh, what's najasa actually technically? What's a najasa? What do, what's the definition of a najasa? Something that we're not supposed to touch. We're not, يعني, you're not supposed to touch it. It's, uh, um, uh, you're not supposed to touch it and you cannot pray with it. Mm -hmm. Between uh, uh, a like we can look into that, but يعني, this is what they have in the madhab here that it uh, vomit invalidates, and I'm sure, I'm sure they have their evidence. تمام? It could be if it's not a hadith, it could be a athar from the Sahabi, uh, from the Sahabi or from the Tabi'een, يعني, uh, a narration from them renewing their wudu after they vomited. مثلا. تمام? Um, I believe there is a narration. Uh, inshallah, we can look it up. Bidnillah. Uh, but just kind of to remind ourselves that the point of this metan, of this, what we're doing here, is to go over the basic rulings, introductory level. Inshallah, later, inshallah, we can. But the, uh, yeah, and there's no harm for us to look into these things if we're not sure about them. Uh, طيب, uh, let's keep going. So next we have unconsciousness. Isha unconsciousness. Yeah, any one of you just falls unconscious right now. Uh, that would invalidate their wudu. So fainting. Uh, uh, when else are you unconscious? When you sleep. When you sleep, you are, you're unconscious. Tamam? Fa unconsciousness, fainting, uh, sleeping. Tayyip, sleeping, we have two kinds of sleep. Tamam? Uh, someone asked this last week. We have light sleep and we have heavy sleep. Tayyip. Fa, fa, we have some hadith where the Sahaba would be waiting for the Prophet for salah, and some of them would kind of like, like doze off. Tamam? Um, so, so, and then they would not renew their wudu. So we have evidence here that they, uh, this doesn't involve your wudu. How can you tell the difference? It can get tricky, but some, some scholars try to put a standard. So some of them said, if you're sleeping with something behind your back, then that's heavy sleep. Tamam? If you're sleeping without something behind your back, that means like whenever you move, you're going to kind of like wake up. Tamam? Uh, uh, some, yeah, some people said if you're standing or sitting without any support, right? So people can sleep standing. I don't know. Some people do it. Um, uh, uh, but heavy sleep will invalidate, right? What's heavy sleep? They say like when, no, when, when you can't hear someone, you know? So like, you know, someone now is napping, for example. Ya Muhammad, 
and he's just like he's gone خلاص <laughs> you know he's like somewhere on the, on the beach <laughs> like you know ف- or we say uh, uh, yo and he's like oh okay so maybe that's will be light sleep Allah ta'ala طبعا always the safest thing if you're not sure just just uh, make wudu طيب جميل so we've done the, the three number four we said there's eight uh, how many said eight right we said there's eight yeah طيب number four uh, washing the deceased we have a hadith about this one right um, so the one actually washing the body of the mayyit okay this person has to renew the wudu the one who's washing the body of the mayyit um, this person has to uh, this is something ta'abudi يعني, you can't really try to find a, like a the, yeah, the, I'm sure there's a hikmah يعني, but uh, something that we have a hadith from it Naam? even if you use gloves probably not Allah alam, that's a good question. I'm not sure. That's a good question. We can look it up because because uh, 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 something if it has to do with the actual touch, then then it, it makes a difference. Tamam, and we'll, we'll talk about that later when we talk about um, uh, the next invalidators, which is touching the private parts and stuff like that. If you have something in between, even touching the mushaf when you don't have wudu, if it has something in between like a glove then it will make a difference. So the ulama make a difference between that. But that's a good question. I, actually, I'd be interested in looking, look, looking it up. Because some people do wash with gloves, right? Like they're dead, right? They do, do it with the gloves. Type. Or it could be the actual action. Wallah, and that's a good question to, to look up, inshallah. Um, so washing the deceased, eating camel meat. So this is from Mufradat al-Hanabila. Mufradat means like only the Hanbalis actually take this opinion. Tamam? Um, uh, and so... Uh, <laughs> Many times, like you, when you study fiqh, co- uh, comparative fiqh, you know, a lot of the times, like uh, the ones who are kind of, they have a different opinion, you'll find the Hanafi madhab a lot of times, okay, um, because of their methodology of, of driving fiqh. But here you have uh, the, the Hanbali madhab, actually, they're the ones, the only ones that said eating camel. Even though all of them uh, uh, know the hadith, there's a hadith about actual eating camel meat, but some of them say there's, a, there's an abrogation. There's a hadith that came towards the end of the seerah where the Prophet said that, uh, that it's fine to eat uh, anything that touches the, the, the fire. So, uh, so eating camel meat. So uh, if you eat, ca- anybody here eat camel meat? Camel? Camel? It's good. It's nice. <laughs> um, but if you eat the liver, drink the milk, spleen, anything that's not considered meat, that's fine. It won't, it won't invalidate. Your meat, meat uh, uh, the camel is an interesting animal actually. If you, there's some interesting hadith about the camels, right? Um, uh, how the, the hadith about the shayateen, you know, being in the, in the place of the camels and, and things like that. But the camel is an interesting animal. And subhanAllah, if you look at some of the hadith, it's very interesting. Uh, Naam? The hadith, the hadith. Yeah, they, they don't see the hadith yansakh. Uh, yani they don't think that hadith yansakh had al hadith. And this one they say it's asah. Fa, yani, yani, there's fiya uh, kalam yani. Um, number six. Naam? Yeah, yeah, so they say eating camel meat, you have to make wudu. Uh, the Maliki also say, I think that's a minority opinion though. Allah alam. And for my, what I know is, is uh, the Hanaba, they're very strict on this one. Um, the next one is uh, um, uh, apostating, leaving Islam. Uh, uh, so if someone left Islam and came back, مثلا, they would have to, they would lose their wudu. They would lose their wudu because the, the niyyah is gone, the iman is gone. They would have to. Uh, so they say ap- apostating. Be- why apostating? They say because it, uh, uh, if someone leaves Islam, to enter Islam, they have to what? You have to do ghusl, and everything that gets you, that makes you do ghusl, makes you lose wudu. Does that make sense? And everything that makes you, this, this is the next point here. It says apostating in everything that obligates ghusl. What obligates ghusl? Janaba, right? For the woman, menstruation. Uh, what else? Huh? Ghusl. You know, um, uh, 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 someone, uh, 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 intercourse. You know, these things, they, they, they mandate uh, uh, ghusl. So if it mandates ghusl, that means you lose your wudu. Obviously, now. Okay, so, so apostate in everything that obligates ghusl other than death, because death requires ghusl, not, uh, not wudu, right? Uh, when someone dies, you have to, you have to wash them. Type. Uh, so touching the private part or the back, 
So the private part or the back, it has to be skin to skin. So here, like, if someone has something uh, uh, covering it, because otherwise, يعني, if someone like just touches here his cloth right now, right, the, the bottom here, right, like his, his, his private part, does that make you lose wudu? No, <laughs> that's a problem then. If, if there's something in between, it doesn't make you lose wudu. Does that make sense? Okay, but if you touch it skin to skin with, uh, يعني, with your hand, then uh, I don't know how else you're going to touch it, but يعني, uh, uh, then you would lose your wudu. So touching the private part or the, or the back. So that's number seven. And number eight, touching the opposite gender with shahwa, with desire. This is the opinion of the, of the madhab. Touching the opposite gender with desire, skin to skin, without a barrier. Touching the opposite gender with shahwa. What does it mean shahwa, right? Uh, uh, um, like a desire, you have a desire. It's not just a, you just bumped into someone, مثلا, something like that, right? Um, imagine, imagine that's the case in the haram. Like, <laughs> Nobody would have wudu, right? Because when it's really congested, if you've ever been in the busy times, مثلا, um, no one would have wudu. They said excluding the hair, uh, teeth, nails, or the person, uh, uh, because it's not really part of the body. Uh, uh, what about the one who, who got touched? Does he lose their wudu? Al-Malmus, he doesn't lose his wudu, right? Um, uh, the one who's touched is not, it's only the one that does it with the desire, he, he doesn't. Uh, and of course, this doesn't count for anybody under seven. Anybody under seven? Uh, would not count, would not count. So touching like, uh, يعني, here the ulama, they will mention things that are haram, مثلا. If someone touches, uh, like someone under seven, even with shahwa, even with shahwa, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, uh, uh, yeah. So what if you're washing your shirt, for example, after they even have water? Yeah, so he's saying here under seven, not included. So you can yeah, under seven, not included. So even if it's nice, so if you remove their najasa? If you, if you remove their najasa. najasa. Um, so if they're over seven, under seven is fine. Yeah, under seven is fine. It's fine. طيب. Uh, and then a uh, qaad they always mention, if in doubt, follow uh, the last thing you remember, يعني follow your yaqeen. What does that mean? Because we have a qaad in fiqh, in, in, in qawaad al-fiqh is what? Huh? Uh, say it again? Yeah, yeah, you say it. Al-shakku la yazulu? Ahsant. Yeah. So, al-yaqeen la yazulu bil-shak. So, what does that mean? You have shak, doubt, and you have yaqeen, certainty. Tamam? So, uh, uh, let's give an example. For example, um, you have, uh, um, I'm sure I made wudu today, okay, at 6 o'clock. I'm sure, 100%. Uh, but I have doubt. I'm not sure. I'm like, uh, uh, did I lose wudu or not from 6 to now? Okay, what, uh, what's my state right now? What's the final conclusion? Uh, I have wudu. Wadah? Because I'm 100% sure I made wudu, but I'm doubtful if I lost it. But the opposite, okay? I'm sure five, t 10 minutes ago, uh, or like an hour ago, I, I, I passed air. Okay? wudu, one of the things that, okay? Uh, and I'm doubtful if I made wudu. I think so, I'm not sure. I went to the bathroom, but I'm not sure if I washed or not. So, w w what's your state right now? Because you're, you're certain that you lost it, but you're not sure if you, if you made it. Wadah? Salim Wadah? Yeah? Jameel, so quickly, the eight. Uh, who can remember them? Let's go through them together. Uh, the eight. Yalla shabab. Number one, whatever comes out of the, the two private parts. And then whatever comes out from the rest of the body, if it's uh, uh, najis and it's a lot. Tamam? Or if it's bowl or uh, if it's urine or, or feces. Type. Number three. Hmm? Sah, uh, being unconscious, yeah? Fainting, sleeping. Okay, number four, washing the dead. Number five, eating the camel, man. Don't forget the camel. Eating the camel meat. Tamam. Number six, uh huh, huh? Apostating or anything that, 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 uh, that you need to uh, do ghusl for. Anything that you need to do ghusl for, then obviously that invalidates your wudu. Tamam. Uh, uh, number six, and then number seven. We said touching the private part, tamam. Uh, uh, um, and then number eight, touching the opposite gender with, with desire, tamam. So I'm going to ask you guys next week these eight, right? Because we need to know them, right? This is the things that we have to apply every day. Type um, for, forbidden acts in the state of, of janaba, the state of, of, of impurity. Type. Naam? 
Yeah, number seven, tafadhal. Yeah, so, so, so what they say is when you're doing ghusl, طبعاً, we're going to talk about ghusl, it's coming up. But uh, the sunnah way of doing ghusl is, is you, you wash your hands, okay? Uh, عفوا, you wash your private parts first, okay? And then you wash your hand and then your head and then your right side, left side. We're going to talk about the, the sunnah way and we're going to talk about like the, the bare minimum of ghusl. تمام? So it's always recommended in ghusl that the private part is not touched last. Wadah? Okay, طيب. good question, excellent. طيب. Let's go to forbidden acts in state of impurity. So we said, uh, uh, one in a state of minor ritual impurity. So uh, minor ritual impurity means what? You lost your, right? You're, you lost your wudu. We have major impurity, which is janaba, right? You have to do ghusl for it. Okay, this is important to understand. You have major uh, uh, impurity, which is al-janaba, which you need to do ghusl for. And then we have minor impurity, okay, minor janaba, which is uh, 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 minor impurity, which, which is you just need to make wudu for. That's what we're talking about here, right? So when you, when you don't have wudu, okay, but uh, you've, you, you don't have to do ghusl, you, you don't have, uh, but you don't have your wudu, you can't what? Number one, touch the mushaf, tamam? So you cannot touch the mushaf. If you have a barrier, it's okay. If you have a barrier, then it's okay, inshallah. Um, uh, uh, but and the ulama they, sp they specify here, yeah, they're talking about the actual mushaf. If I grab a tafsir now, that wouldn't count as a mushaf. It's recommended to have wudu because it's, there's the words of Allah there, but you would still be allowed to, to open it. Fadl. So if you look on this cap, you have an added cover, right? Does that count as a mushaf? Yeah, that's a good question. Is that part of the mushaf? It's part of the mushaf, right? I think it's part of the mushaf. Uh, it's not touching the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some said it's okay. Some say like the cover you actually put over the, the, the cover over the cover. Um, uh, you know the, like the, the paper cover? And then you have the actual, uh, yeah, the sleeve. Uh, some put that uh, just for extra safety. Uh, Tawadda. Yeah, this is a tricky part. And actually that's one thing I discussed with Sheikh Hatim once is that those kids who are, um, the, the, the kids who are like yani young, they're excused. Like the ulama, they give them an excuse, they're fine. But the kids that are baligh and they, they're supposed to know their wudu and stuff like that, we, we always recommend them to be in tahara. And we like to teach them to be in tahara. So they should, because those are our Quran, those are Quran, right? Um, and you're touching the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you should have, uh, and we have many evidence, uh, etc. So uh, but what about the jawal? What about the phone? You're going to ask that. I know someone's going to ask that. What about the phone? Huh? Hmm? So the phone is not really considered a, a, a mushaf. But what about I open now, you know, Quran reader and I don't have wudu. Can I touch the, like, can I touch al-Baqarah, like the eye of, can I touch it? Huh? Okay. It's okay? Or it's not allowed? Yeah, they say, when I was looking at the commentary here, he actually mentions it. Uh, he said, this needs more research, but he said, basically, uh, there's a there's a barrier between you and it. Yeah, the screen is a barrier. If we say data is there physically, I don't want to go into that 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 angle. But if we say the actual data is physically there, okay, there's still the screen protector there technically. Yani. Unless you don't have a screen protector, yani it's so it should be fine. It should be fine. Just like we yani we say technically, you go to the bathroom with your phone, the Quran it's there, and it's yani he also mentioned uh, um, one of the contemporary uh, ulama. He said it's not a large part of the phone. I never thought about it from that angle. Yani the Quran that you have here, what percentage is it of, of the phone, of the data there? Yeah, it's very tiny. Now, if we said that the whole device is a Quran device, that's a different story. So if you have like those, uh, I don't know, those like Quran readers or something, or like the majority of the Quran, that yani that's goes into the gray area. Number two, we have salah. Let me just finish this. We have two, uh, salah, obviously. Uh, um, you cannot pray. And uh, it would be sinful to do that. And tawaf. Why tawaf? We have a hadith that says that uh, tawaf is like salah, except you can talk. Tawaf is like salah. And this is a long debate, actually. I, I did a, a whole research paper on this one. And it's uh, one of the most complicated. <laughs> like, uh, there's a lot of uh, disagreement between the ulama about whether you are allowed to do it or not. Whether you're allowed to do it uh, or not. Uh, a sa'i, it's, it's a bit more lax. Yani you, can, you, you don't have to have your wudu with it. But at tawaf, they're very, uh, yani some of them are very strict on it, like the Hanabila. They say you cannot. Because they said, the Prophet said, it's, it's, uh, tawaf is like salah, except what? You cannot talk. Tamam? And so they kind of try to keep the same rulings. They did analogy here. Okay, it's like salah, you need wudu, etc. 
Um, others said no, others said okay, and it can be difficult. Someone is doing tawaf and then they have to go to the bathroom and it's better to have it. طيب. Um, one instead of a major uh, ritual, okay, so we talked about the minor impurity, تمام? which we said three. But what about the major impurity? So in the major impurity, take those three and add two more. Okay, so the, the minor uh, 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 impurity, okay, where you need wudu, there's three things we said, the, the touching the mushaf, salah and tawaf. For the major impurity, all of the above, the three and two more. What are the two more? So uh, the Hanabla, they say you cannot recite any part of the Quran that it has ma'na, an actual ayah. تمام. So reciting the Quran while in janaba. What is janaba? Meaning you have to do ghusl. Okay? So we said, مثلا, the woman uh, is in her cycle or the, 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 uh, the male, uh, uh, مثلا, uh, he was intimate with his wife, he has to do uh, ghusl uh, or he had a wet dream. Okay? So now uh, the Hanabi, they say you cannot read, uh, you cannot recite Quran. Okay? You cannot recite Quran. Um, and then they say here, a woman with menses or postpartum bleeding can stay with, uh, can stay with, uh, oh, sorry, uh, the, the number three is uh, is staying in the masjid. So we have, we have a hadith about staying in the masjid in the state of major impurity, in the state of janaba. So if you have janaba, um, uh, then if you want to stay in the masjid, you have to do what? You have to do wudu at least. Okay? Some of you might say, well, what's the point of doing wudu if you don't have ghusl? Right? But actually you'll see in, in some of the, uh, يعني, even the Prophet ﷺ, if he was uh, intimate with, with his wife and he couldn't do ghusl or, or he... And he was too tired to do ghusl, he would do wudu if he wants to مثلاً, go eat or he wants to go back to sleep or actually he wants to be intimate again with his wife he would, from the sunnah is he would do wudu تمام? يعني so you, he, wouldn't, يعني he wouldn't necessarily have to do ghusl and then again and then ghusl so um, uh, staying in the masjid without wudu if he cannot use water for some reason then he cannot do tayammum but, uh, uh, so the hanab they say tayammum will not replace it why we're gonna when we cover tayammum we'll see that tayammum it's not exactly the same as wudu it's just a rukhsa okay uh, a concession uh, if you don't have water uh, but he can stay because he cannot find water so if someone cannot find water to make wudu and he's in a state of of, of major impurity he can stay in the masjid if there's no water but if there's water he should make wudu and then he can stay in the masjid okay a woman same thing, a woman in her, in her uh, uh, menstrual cycle, um, she can stay as long as she can make wudu and she, she, she doesn't leak. So she can make sure that she's not leaking because it's a najasa. She has to make sure that a najasa, and in general, anybody who has a najasa that might be leaking or something, they need to make sure that it's covered. Tayyip, let's go to ghusl. We need to do ghusl. Tayyip, so we said al ghusl basically um, is, what? Is, is what you need to remove major uh, 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 impurity, right? Tayyip. There are seven things that make ghusl uh, uh, wajib. Okay, things that makes ghusl wajib. Let's go over them. Seven things. Number one, ejaculation that comes uh, uh, out with pleasure. So the Hanaba, they say that uh, uh, ejaculation has to happen with ladda. Like it has to, uh, with ladda, there has to be pleasure. So someone might say, well, is it actually possible medically? I don't know if there's any doctors here. Is it possible medically? They'll say, uh, uh, some of the commentaries, they say yes, but it will be a medical condition. Like it comes out of the actual private part, but without any pleasure. And that's a medical condition. They say this one does not remove, does not uh, obligate him to do, to do ghusl. Does that make sense? So it has to come out with, let the, this is important. Why? Because the second, uh, uh, the second one, they say, if it, if, it, um, like if it moves from its original place, what does it mean? Taban, the original place is in the, is in the testicles, right? And so they say that uh, uh, it moves from its origin. Yani the person did something, that caused, him, uh, caused it to move, but it never actually came out. Yani may, maybe they say he stopped it or something happened. Uh, here they say that the reason for that is, 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 is they believe that the reason for obligating uh, uh, wudu is the actual pleasure that he feels, the ladda. So if someone feels that pleasure, but it doesn't actually come out, and there are cases like that, somebody might actually uh, uh, climax without something coming out. Tab, does he need ghusl or no? He does need ghusl. According to them, they say, because intaqal, يعني, uh, something intaqal but never came out, then, uh, then, then he would need uh, ghusl. And he felt that pleasure, so he, uh, uh, he would need ghusl. So number one, ejaculation. And number two, semen that does not come out. And number three, they said to insert the, the, the private part into the other, يعني, the, the female private part, okay? Without a barrier. 
Because uh, when you see uh, the Hanabala, they say if there is a barrier, like a condom, for example, for example then, then it would not uh, obligate ghusl. It would not obligate ghusl. Tamam? And they say specifically, yani the, 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 the head has to enter, and that would, that would uh, uh, make it obligatory for the person to do uh, ghusl. So he says, even if it is inside of, okay, and it doesn't mean that this is okay. So even if it's inside of an animal, so somebody uses the male private part, and this is found in the books of fiqh, and fuqha are asked, and nowadays even more, like now <laughs> we live in a crazy world, uh, or, 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 or a dead body. Like if someone, uh, uh, the male part enters into a dead body, whether male or female, and whether it's the same uh, gender or opposite gender of a dead animal, uh, over an animal, or a dead animal, or a dead human body, then that would require ghusl. Unless what? Unless it's done with a barrier, like a condo, for example. Um, it doesn't obligate uh, uh, ghusl. طيب. Unless what? Unless the, the semen moves. We said if there's movement, then, uh, uh, then, then he has to do ghusl. And same for a woman. Number four, someone who converts to Islam, they have to do ghusl. Someone who accepts Islam, if someone accepts Islam right now, then they have to do uh, ghusl. 9.12, is it? 9.17? Okay, good, we're good. طيب. Uh, uh, death, right? When someone dies, we have to do ghusl. Okay? Uh, number six, the menstrual cycle of the woman. So the woman, every month, she has her cycle. She has to do ghusl. After the cycle is done, after the cycle is done, she has to do uh, ghusl. Um, uh, and also, uh, postpartum bleeding, and after she has a child, those days that she's bleeding, after that she has to, she has to do ghusl. So the last two are related to, specifically to, to the woman, okay? So quickly, the seven, uh, uh, ejaculation with, with, uh, with ledda, uh, with pleasure. Uh, um, if semen c comes out, uh, sorry, uh, it does not come out, but it moves. Um, number three, if the private part is inserted in, in any other private part, whether dead or alive, okay, without a barrier. Uh, someone converts to Islam, death, uh, menses and and nifas postpartum bleeding. So those are the seven things that require ghusl. The seven things that that uh, now the person requires to do uh, ghusl. طيب. When are when is ghusl recommended? So we have actually a, a huge list. Number one, uh, طبعا, some of the other madhab they'll make this wajib. The Hanabila see that al ghusl yom al juma is something that is uh, uh, sunnah muakkada, like something that is highly recommended. So in Jum'ah prayer, what else? Let's let's hear from some of you guys. When is ghusl recommended? Not wajib recommended. Let's see. Ah, Sheikh. Tfaddal. When is it recommended? We have like 14 of them. <laughs> like, naam? Eid prayer. Na naam, yeah. Think of all the other gatherings that people gather. Right? Ah, what else? When is... Huh? Huh? Everyone's... Come on, Shabab. When is ghusl recommended? Ah, Muhammad. Huh? Naam? After travel? I'm not sure if that's one of them. Hmm? Tab, let's go through them. Let's go through them. So Jum'ah prayer, Eid prayer. Ah, yalla. Uh, uh, kusuf prayer, right? We did Kusuf here a couple of months ago. Um, it's recommended. You'll see here that a lot of them are, are analogy. Why? Because from the Sharia, we see that the Prophet ﷺ always recommended when people gather. Why? Because you don't want to smell bad. You want to smell nice when people gather, etc. Right? Uh, this is one of the, 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 the wisdoms. Uh, when you Salat al-Istisqa, another time people gather, right? When you go pray for rain, Salat al-Istisqa to do ghusl, right? Uh, after being, uh, uh, so they say when there's junoon, someone like went crazy, like lost their mind. Something happened, like lost their mind. Um, I'm not sure if losing your mind out of anger is included here. Um, uh, uh, or you lose consciousness. You just lose consciousness. Then uh, it's recommended to do ghusl, uh, uh, right? Uh, as long as it's not ihtilam, like wet dream. تمام? Then it's wajib. If it's a wet dream, it's wajib, right? Someone goes to sleep and they have a wet dream, right? Uh, ejaculation happens, then they have, that's wajib. We, we, we talked about it in the last one. Uh, number six, before every salah for a woman who has istihada. Istihada, we're going to talk about it. Istihada is a medical condition where a woman, she, she continuously bleeds, okay? She continuously bleeds. So for her, uh, uh, it's recommended for her to do uh, ghusl. It's recommended, it's not wajib, but it's recommended for her to do, to do ghusl uh, 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 before every salah. Uh, uh, ihram or Umrah or Hajj, right? It's recommended to do ghusl, right? So whenever you do Umrah, you see people, there's a, there's a miqat, there's like washrooms and stuff. If you go to, to Mecca straight without doing ghusl, some people think it's wajib. It's not wajib, it's, it's something that is recommended, right? Because again, you're going to, to do a major act of worship and there's a lot of people and you want to smell good. 
um, before entering Mecca. Same thing, a lot of people are there before entering the Haram in Mecca of the Prophet's grave. Uh, before stay, uh, staying in Arafah, Arafah, there's a lot of people. Uh, tawaf of Ziyara, a lot of people. Tawaf of Wada'a, uh, staying in Muzdalifa, a lot of people there, and so on. So all of these are, are kind of qiyas, analogy of, of uh, Fadl Ibrahim. Yeah, so that's what they're saying. So one of the reasons they put all of these, uh, any like acts of worship, uh, uh, that, that there's a lot of gathering people. You're saying in general, any gathering people? Like you're going for a soccer game or something? Yeah. Huh? Or you're going, what's a, like what's another, like a, like a big lecture? Like there's a big lecture? Yeah, I'm sure that's, that you could kind of use that analogy to say that it's recommended, right? In general, it's, it's recommended to smell good, right? Fadl. Muzdalifah is, is a place in, 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 uh, in Mecca uh, It's part of the places we have to go in Hajj Right? So one of the places you have to go uh, in Hajj after Arafah Is Muzdalifah Right? Where Mash'ar al-Haram is طيب. Other things related to ghusl For ghusl of menstruation or Okay, طيب. so uh, there's a mas'ala here They talk about um, For women when she uh, uh, After um, you know, her cycle is done Her monthly cycle or she's done bleeding after the child, okay? She has to do ghusl. Agreed? Everyone agree? Type. She has to do ghusl. Type. Um, and also for her, she also has to do ghusl if she's in a state of janaba, right? Like she's intimate with her husband or whatever. Type. The Hanabila here, they, they talk about, because of a hadith, what if a woman has her head like tied, tied or locked or whatever? Does she have to take it all off and then wash the whole thing every time? So they say if it's out of uh, 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 um, um, menstrual uh, blood or nifas, right? Or postpartum bleeding, then she has to untie her hair and actually wash it all, okay? But if it's just janaba, because janaba can happen like multiple times a day, right? Something that's, so the sharia uh, takes it easy on that. And she only has to like wash the roots of her head. She only have to wash the roots of her hair because she has a lot of hair, right? And so she only has to wash the actual roots of her hair. She has to make sure that, because that will cover all the hair, all the head of her head. Uh, uh, okay, let's talk about the sunnah amount of water. This is interesting. So uh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would use uh, uh, a mud for, for, uh, for wudu. Okay, so wudu we said, uh, you know, so he would use a mud. Technically 0 0.5, this amount right here, alhamdulillah, it's right here. So he would use this much for wudu. Um, I challenge you to try this. Um, I've tried it. I actually tried it in real life situations, um, uh, um, and it's doable. But you have to. The hardest thing is just learning how to hold it and moving, or you have someone else do it for you. But it's interesting because when you do wudu, uh, you know, at home or whatever, you'd be surprised how much water we use. And so it's it's from the Sharia or the Sunnah to not waste water. From the Sunnah, adam uh, al-israf, uh, you know, uh, with water, even if it's abundant, right? Even if it's abundant, right? It's not recommended to waste a lot of water. Okay, so about, uh, so they say about two hands put together, about 0 0.5 liters. So that's for wudu. What about ghusl? Obviously, you can't do ghusl with this. That would be pretty hard. Um, uh, they say uh, uh, saw of water, they say about 2.04 liters, like four muds, one, two, three, four. Okay, that's realistic. Okay, two, two liters of water. It's doable. Tamam. Uh, um, so this is kind of the recommend. They say here, if you're able to do it with less than these amounts, with isbagh, okay, then it is not uh, disliked, okay? Because someone might say, well, can I do it less? Um, maybe he doesn't have a lot of water. Remember, like, the sharia is very, yani it's, uh, it's there for all situations. Alhamdulillah, here we have a lot of water. There's no real issue. But let's say you have a little bit of water and you don't want to waste it. I, I was in a situation like this just last year. <laughs> like, I was abroad. And uh, the water was cut, and they have these huge, huge containers of water, right? This is your wudu water, your ghusl water, your, like your washing your hands water, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, drinking water, everything, okay? Fa, you know, you have to, you don't know when the water's coming back. Like the company is not gonna tell you, oh, we just, like here they have a, when the water, the pipe broke here. Alhamdulillah, you still have water. But like, you don't know, so you wanna be, you know, can I use less? Yeah, you, they say it's not the slight to use less as long as you were able to do it. We, they said as long as you do it with isbagh. What's isbagh? Isbagh, someone asked last week, al isbagh bil wudu, because we have a hadith. The Prophet said that al isbagh of wudu actually erases the sins. Tamam? And raises your levels. Uh, Arif mentioned it last week. 
So al isbagh is when the water kind of flows through. Okay, if you want to know what isbagh is, know what wiping is, and, 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 and you'll know the difference. Wiping is what? If I take some water right now, right? If I take some water and just wipe. Okay, is there any water running? There's no water running. So that's not isbagh. What's recommended in wudu is that the water actually runs through. Okay, so you can actually make it run with this if you want to make wudu. Maybe one day we can show it. You, you can actually make the water run as long as the water runs. That's what's uh, recommended. Okay. Uh, um, and, and this is wajib. This is wajib for wudu and ghusl. So nobody can say, I'm going to wipe in ghusl. Okay. Nobody can say that. You, the water actually has to run. Right. And we said it's this like to, to waste water. Type. If a person intends that he will lift both major and minor. So here they talk about in, uh, intention and niyyah. Right. If a person intends that he will lift both major and minor ritual impurities. So someone now is in Janaba um, and, uh, and uh, you know, he wants to remove both of them. So then they will uh, both be lifted by the same ghusl. So if you make intention for ghusl, okay, then the ghusl will remove the major and the minor. Okay, inshallah, it will remove your, your major and your minor, uh, minor impurity. If he does not include the actual wudu in his ghusl, okay, uh, yeah, so because some will say that you actually have to make wudu. No, you don't. If you do ghusl with the intention of removing both of them, okay, let's, let's slow down here. Okay, I, I'm in a state of janaba, major impurity. So obviously, um, uh, 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 and I want to pray, okay. Now I have to, I need ghusl and wudu, okay. If you make intention to do ghusl and wudu to remove major, minor impurity, okay, uh, uh, and you just have the water run through you, like we said, okay, we're going we're gonna to explain the, the steps of ghusl in a bit. Uh, then, then, inshallah, you can pray now. Okay? Inshallah, you can pray now. Okay? So even if you didn't actually do wudu, okay? Because ghusl is higher than, than wudu. Tamam? Uh, it's a comprehensive tahara. If he intends to lift uh, ritual impurity in general without intending, uh, intending major or minor, then it will, be, uh, it will too be, be sufficient to remove major and minor ritual. Uh, same thing, and it kind of just kind of semantics. They're saying that. Uh, uh, even if you just want to remove all impurity, tamam, that's your like a general intention. Then inshallah, and you have water running through everything. Then inshallah, that will that will uh, be sufficient. But if your intention is just for wudu, مثلا, and then you do ghusl, then it's not sufficient because in al you need your intention uh, to be there. طيب, uh, it is sunnah for one who's in a state of janaba to uh, uh, wash his private parts, even if he's not intended to do to, to do complete ghusl. Yeah, so we mentioned that this is one of the sunnah of the Prophet that, uh, 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 that it's recommended if you're in a state of major impurity, okay, and you want to do, you want to eat or drink or sleep, right, or be intimate again with your wife, then it's recommended to do wudu. It's recommended uh, uh, to do wudu um, uh, for that. طيب. It is better to do complete ghusl when one is in a state of of Janaba, complete ghusl. We're going to talk about the types of ghusl here in, in a second. I want to make sure I finish that before we pray. Um, and it is dislike to sleep for a, for a junub without wudu. So someone is in a state of Janaba, a major impurity, but then he was intimate. It's disliked. It's makru for someone to sleep without uh, 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 like that. Okay. If he if he doesn't want to make uh, ghusl, then he should at least make uh, 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 wudu. He should at least make wudu. Something unique about ghusl is that you don't need the continuity that's mentioned in, in wudu. Remember in wudu we said it has to be in order and it has to be like all together. You cannot like, right? But in ghusl, if you like wash half of your body and then مثلا, I don't know, you do some push-ups and then you wash the second half, it's still valid. And there's no specific order you have to have. Okay? So those are two different things between uh, uh, ghusl and wudu. So the wajib of ghusl, we said uh, intention, tasmiyah, and al-isbagh, the intention, the niyyah, right? And saying bismillah, and al-isbagh, wajib. So if I forget it, what happens? Huh? Is it okay? Is my ghusl okay? Huh? Ahsant, yes. We said wajib, if you forget it, okay, then it should be fine, inshallah, it should be, uh, it should be fine. Our forgetfulness, mathalan, uh, it should be fine. So let's finish with this, how to do ghusl. So we said there's two ways to do ghusl. Okay, there's two ways to do ghusl. Okay, okay, Ibrahim uh, Salim, I'm going to ask you guys. Okay, number one is like the, the, the sufficient way, which is basically, like if I go to, to the lake now, okay, and just make the niyyah, go into the lake, and then come out. Is that sufficient? Can I go pray now? Yeah, technically you can go pray. Because the water went through your whole body, it covered everything, 
uh, tamam. Okay, or shower, running water, just running down. Okay, you make the niyyah, you make the niyyah, and then you should be fine. Then there's the more recommended sunnah, uh, complete uh, ghusl. We have durations of this. That the Prophet would make the intention, he would wash his private parts, then he would wash his hands, okay, then he would make wudu, okay, uh, then he would uh, wash, wash his head. Uh, that's a typo there, okay. You have to wash, uh, he would wash his head, right? So, okay, let's say, let's, we're gonna start ghusl now. We go, we make intention, wash private parts, and then we wash our hands, and then we make the full wudu, and then we wash our head, okay, uh, then wash the right side, okay. Let's say like you have a bucket or something, or you have a shower, right side, left side, and then basically you go through the whole body one more time. Okay, maybe you have some soap or whatever on. You, you wash it all, and that's it. And that's kind of like a full, proper uh, 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 ghusl, inshallah. But if you just do, you know, just water comes down, and you have your niyyah, then that is, uh, that is uh, sufficient. But the time is not sufficient for tayammum, so inshallah we'll have, we'll have to leave tayammum, dry ablution, inshallah, for next week. Um, th then is when? Is in three minutes? Tayyip. Um, طيب, let's let's uh, let's just leave the last uh, maybe three four minutes for questions inshallah and then we'll we'll call it a day there. طيب, تفضل, بسم الله. Ah, uh, you guys get them to pray. Ah. That's interesting. No, no. And they pray with you guys. But Aslan, they don't know how to pray. Aslan. Fa, yani, it's not technically yani, obligatory for them at that time to pray. Okay? If they pray out of education or whatever, Allah Alam, I think it should be fine. Um, uh, but, uh, but technically, it's, but it's still wajib for them to make ghusl. Do you understand? Like, so here, it's wajib for them to do ghusl now to, to fully, yani, they're, they're Muslim, but now they, they, it's, yani, it's, it's wajib for them to do ghusl, to start doing everything else. Okay? Fa, fa, yani, as soon as they can. It's not like they, we have to go get a bucket and just kind of, you know, do ghusl for them on the spot. But as soon as they can, inshallah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so remember we said, um, for, for ghusl, we don't need sequence. So the Prophet did it like that. So if you want to get extra ajr to do it exactly like the Prophet did, that's fine. And if you, I don't know, you, you, you did uh, wudu last, okay, it's fine. It's accepted. It, it doesn't require you to do anything. It's, it's, it's totally fine. Allah well, Alam, uh, the Prophet uh, did it that way because you, you didn't have running showers. Right? So, I mean, right to left is just like moving <laughs> like your body with shower. But w w if you ever tried, I don't know if you ever tried doing ghusl with, with, a, with a, like a bucket or something. Yeah, like, you know, you need skill. Like, you, got, you do it, you can't just, it, it won't cover your whole body. So, you, 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 will, you will be doing like one side, you know, kind of rubbing, and then the other side, like rubbing. That's what I mean. Now with the shower, just like, like you know, the whole thing. It's a ni'mah, subhanAllah. We don't appreciate it. Fadl. If you want to do ghusl and you're in the bathroom. Yeah, fa, 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 that's the tricky part here. If you're in the shower, technically it's not, like if you're in a bathtub or shower, it's not really the bathroom. Zaman, or one of, some of our countries, like even in Libya, I think, uh, uh, the place where we, where we uh, use like the toilet area, it's, it's separated. صح? But the more now modern Western style is they're all together, okay? But if you have a bathtub that's separated or a shower that's separated, it's it's fine to do but uh, you know the best manner there should be fine inshallah uh, and like here we'll do stations and stuff like that it should be fine inshallah um uh, it's, it's the time for adhan khalas let's do the adhan inshallah barakallahu feekum assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh